In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can hide any file in any image with this one simple trick. But first, Maltronics.com is a site where you can find the most premiumest of hacker hardware. It has Wi-Fi deauthors, Malduinos, USB protectors, and Wi-Fi keyloggers all in one place. It's a site run by me. Check it out, give it a check, give it a look, give it, wait, what? Anyway, have a look in the description, maltronics.com. So if you wanted to send someone a secret file, you could of course just encrypt the file and send it to them, but that's gonna make it pretty obvious that you're sending something secret if that message is intercepted. Here, we're going to be hiding a secret file inside an innocent looking image. The whole idea is, is that if someone intercepts this, this message, this image, they're never gonna even suspect that there's something hidden in it. It just looks like a, a normal innocuous image. For example, if you found a bunch of PGP encrypted emails that looked something like this, you're gonna know someone's got something to hide, that, or they're, they're just paranoid. So if you found an email account full of cat pictures, well, that's probably a pretty normy middle-aged thing to do. Not that I would know. You could of course hide something more important like a Bitcoin private key in an image, such that if someone stole the drive or a folder of files, they're never gonna suspect that there's something important hidden in the image. Of course, you could just encrypt the, the key and that's gonna be, you know, <laughs> as good as anything, but, but that's no fun. Hiding a file in plain sight is what's known as steganography. Now we're talking about computery stuff here, though steganography has been used rather primitively in the past. For example, I think the Greeks would take a servant shave their head and then tattoo on a secret message onto their scalp and then just wait for their hair to regrow and send them on their way. Now, luckily we're not gonna be doing that today. We're just working with images and files, thank God. So to follow along, you're going to need some Linux distro. I'm using Kali because it just has a lot of the prerequisites we already need, as well as VMware Player. I'll link both of these in the description and just download them and let's head over to the computer. So now we're on the computer. I've already downloaded and installed VMware Player. I'm not gonna show you how to download and install it. I think that's I think that's pretty easy to work out at this point. Um, I've got my Kali Linux uh, virtual machine. Now this isn't an ISO, this is a whole virtual machine already installed so you don't have to do any configuration, it's just ready to go. So I'm going to go to player, file, and then open, not virtual machine, not new virtual machine because we've already got the virtual machine, we've already got it installed. And then just find where you've got it there and double click the what's it. And it should set it up for you. Just click play, and then I don't think it matters which one it is here, but we're gonna click copied. But anyway, so the username by default is root, and the password by default is root backwards, so tor, but with two O's, T-O-O-R. So we're gonna want to open up a terminal window here, and you're going to want to type apt get install steghide, if it wants to, yeah, there we go, just a bit of a delay on the keyboard there. So Steghide is the program that's going to be doing all the heavy lifting for us. It's the program that's just gonna be, well, doing everything, essentially hiding the files in images. If your virtual machine has automatically configured itself properly, you will already have access to the internet. So, it's a bit slow here. Come on Firefox, you can, you can do it. Yeah, it's already connected to the internet, so if you just press enter on that, to ask if you actually want to do it. Yes, please. Right, so now that Steghide all installed, you can of course um, man Steghide, and this just gives you essentially a manual of Steg, not Stag, if it wants to. Steg, yes, Steg. And you can read through all the commands here. It's a really simple program to use. It's not complicated in the slightest, except for what it does, which is pretty complicated. So let's look at embedding. So this command embed here is for creating what they call a stego file. Now a stego file is just an image, or you can actually do, I think you can use um, waveforms in this. You can actually hide things in sounds, in, in music. But we're gonna be looking at embedding something first. So embedding is hiding something within something else. So to embed, you're going to need an embed file. So this is the file that contains the secret message you want to hide. This can be anything whatsoever. The cover file, we're just gonna use a JPEG. I'll find one in a second. I think I've got one of my cats on, on standby. The stego file is just the out file, so that's gonna be the output. You can also specify the encryption algorithm to use. We're not gonna do that today, as well as the compression. We're not gonna be touching that. Uh, you can also specify not to compress or no checksum, but we're just gonna be focusing 
on these guys here today, as well as a password, which isn't listed on here. Uh, I think it's down here somewhere. Yes, a passphrase. You can enter a passphrase. That's, that's, that bit's pretty important. I mean, what Steghide does is that it encrypts the hidden file and then it puts that file into the image. Because of course, if someone figures out that there's something hidden in the image, then they can just extract that theoretically. So encrypting it gives you another layer of protection. Uh, the wonders of screen recording, the last 10 minutes just not recorded. So take two, I guess. So I've got a few files here we're going to be using to demonstrate how we can store or rather hide files in images. So the vessel we're going to be using here, our innocuous innocent image is going to be my cats or rather, rather one of them. And in all his majestic glory sitting in this cardboard box just looking out onto the world well we're going to be using him he's going to be um, he's going to be the vessel for our hidden data uh, he's about 662 kilobytes in size so he's not he's not that big and we're going to be hiding this message.txt first of all inside our cato.jpg and this just says we meet at noon so that's going to be our hidden message that we're going to be hiding today um, so now we've got stego file Rather, was it steg file or steg? I think it was stego file. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting confused with the commands here. Steg hide. So now we've got steg hide installed, and we are in the directory we're going to be acting on. We can simply go and type steg hide. Now the command we're going to be using first of all is embed. We're going to be using an embed file. Now the embed file is the file that's going to be embedded. So this is the hidden file, and that's going to be in this case message.txt. And then we're going to be doing a cover file. So the cover file is, of course, um, our cover, which is the cato.jpg. And then the stego file, this is just going to be the output. And now the output, let's call it uh, innocent.jpg. And now we're going to want to do dash p and add a password to this because, like I think I mentioned it, that steg hides will not only hide the file in an image, but it will also encrypt it and then hide it in the image. So let's use a really secure password, uh, password, and just tap enter, and fingers crossed. And there we go, we get innocence.jpg. And if we open this, and if we open this, it looks exactly the same as our original. There's no discernible difference, really. They both look exactly the same. However, one of the clues for the fact that they are actually not the same file is, of course, the file size of the original is 662 kilobytes, whilst the modified one is 724. So there is quite a decent amount of difference in them there. So let's drop this innocent.jpg in our hidden folder here. And we'll just, just to give us some space. Okay, so now let's go and extract that message. Someone has sent us this innocent cat and we want to extract the hidden message from him. Okay, so we're going to want to again use the same command uh, steg hide. Uh, but this time we're going to be using extract. Now I'll just scroll down on the manual here. So for so to extract a file you need to specify a stego file and an extract file. So our stego file in this case is going to be the innocent.jpg and the extract file is going to be, let's just call it, um, let's just call it message.txt for continuity. And you're going to want to specify what the password is for the file. If you don't specify the password and just tap enter, it will ask you for, the, for that passphrase. So we'll just enter that as password. And there we go, we get our message.txt, which just says we meet at noon. So that's how you extract a file. It's all pretty simple. Though let's look at, say for example, you want to um, hide a really big file inside this cato.jpg. Because of course, by hiding a file inside the cat, you are changing the image ever so slightly. However, if you change it too much, then it just becomes obvious that there's something hidden in it that is just not quite right. And that just defeats the whole purpose of steganography. So let's go back to our documents here and let's create a random file just something some, a large file it doesn't really matter what I'm doing here you don't really have to follow along with this this is just a command in Linux uh, with a few parameters that can be used to create random files so we've, we've got an input here of random and an output of large.txt and let's just see how big this is 
Okay, so this isn't that large. This is 75 kilobytes. Oh no, I opened it. Oh no, that was a bad idea. Okay, never mind. It's just a text file full of absolute garbage. And if you were to look at the size of this, well, we already said it's 75 kilobytes. So that doesn't sound that large, but that's about 10%, just over 10% of the size of our original image. So let's go and do that same command there. And what was it? Stake hide embed. But this time, instead of message.txt, we'll embed large.txt and see what happens. So we get an error. The cover file is too short. So this file is just too small. It's not going to be able to hide all that data inside this image. However, I have got a um, not really that big .txt because it's a file that isn't really that big and it's only 15 kilobytes so it's a lot larger than our initial message which was only a few, only 15 bytes but this should change the image somewhat so let's embed this not really that big .txt and it works we get an innocent .jpeg okay so the file size of this one isn't really all that difference to the previous one. Well, it is a lot different to this one, but it's not a lot different to the other image we just embedded. And that's because I presume there's a lot of overhead involved when in encrypting and embedding a, a file like this into an image. So let's, at this point, we know how to embed a file, we know how to extract a, extract a file. Let's figure out how we can discern whether there is actually an image hidden in this file. If you had these two images, how would you know that there's something embedded within this one? Other than it just saying the file size is slightly larger, which could be due to almost anything. So first of all, let's look at the histograms of these two images, the Kato and innocent.jpg. So I'll input Kato first of all and let's look at the red channel. Now, if you don't know what a histogram is, it's as far as I, I'm no expert, but it's a way of looking at the, um, the, the tonal distribution, the distribution of color within an image, essentially, ish. And let's look at innocent.jpg and look at the same channel. And you'll see that these two histograms are ever so slightly different. So that kind of indicates that there is a difference within these two images. And I think when you actually toggle between the two images, it does seem like there is a very slight difference in the saturation of the image. The original image looks a lot more saturated. I haven't come across that when using this program in, um, in, in the past. However, it is fairly noticeable when you have the original image to compare. However, this could just be a really bad Instagram filter. It doesn't necessarily mean that there is something embedded within the image. Okay, now let's look at this website, which is onlineimagecomparison.com. It allows you to drop two images, and let's put the fuzz down. So the fuzz, so what this website is going to do is just going to find the difference in the two images. So what pixels aren't the same? What pixels have been altered? And the fuzz is just um, variable here, just specifies uh, like a sieve, the, um, the size of the holes of the sieve. And we're making the size of the holes here really large. So even small differences in the image will show. If you put this fuzz value up pretty high, then it's only gonna show large differences in images. So let's compare these and see what happens. So it would seem as if Steghide has tried to um, hide data in parts of the image where there is a lot of detail, such as the, um, the opening of the box here around uh, my cat's ears, his fur, his whiskers, and it hasn't tried to hide a lot of data in the parts of the image where it's very flat, because of course differences in that is it's gonna be quite obvious. So you can kind of see how it works. It's trying to hide it in edges along the image and the text here on the side of the box. So I would imagine that's a pretty surefire way of knowing that there may be something hidden within a certain file. Now, of course, if you just delete the original file, kato.jpg, no one's ever going to be able to have the original image to compare it with. So if you try to embed data within a publicly available image, that's probably a bad idea because someone with a, too much time on their hands could figure out there's something hidden in there. However, if you take your own photo, your own image that isn't publicly available and then edit it, that's going to be a lot better of a way of hiding stuff. Now, you might be wondering whether there's a way to check whether there is something hidden within a file without having the original image. And that is 
possible-ish. However, when you do that, you're delving into the realms of neural networks, machine learning, and um, PhDs, as far as I can see from Googling it. So I'm going, that, that's, that's a bit above me, so I'm gonna leave that. <laughs> So thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this video somewhat interesting and satisfied your urge to hide files in your photos. So yeah, remember to comment, uh, let me know what you liked, what you didn't, and if you have any suggestions for the future, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.